Hello there, you dazzlingly sensuous person, you, and welcome to another crotch tinglingly fascinating episode of Techspert Weekly, the only weekly tech news show that Boris Johnson hasn't tried to insert his penis inside. And yeah, I'm fully aware that that intro makes absolutely bugger all sense, but who really gives a shit? At least half of the people who clicked on this video have realised they've made a dreadful mistake by now and already buggered off to watch some MKBHD instead. And to anyone who happens to be guiding that mouse cursor towards the back button right now, just hold your horses for a second, I guarantee guarantee you we've got at least 20 to 30 seconds of content that doesn't suck too hard coming up so maybe could be possibly worth your while potentially you might not 100% regret it is what I'm trying to say unless that is you really don't like words like cockwomble and jizz biscuit and in the and of it. If you don't like fruity language like that, then yeah, you might well be better off with that MKBHD fella. Uh, jingle. Techspert Weekly. So the big launch this week came courtesy of Xiaomi, who are frankly like an out of control fire hose, jizz and fresh produce over a what seemed to be thrilled audience. Seriously, there were so many new phones and other gadgety bits that it took them two bloody days to launch it all. It was like the cricket match of tech events. And just like cricket matches, I spent the whole time necking special brew. As far as phones go, we saw the mighty Mi 11 Ultra finally unveiled Boston dual displays and upgraded camera tech compared with the standard Mi 11 flagship. The Snapdragon 888 power and tri-factor cooling system should make Genshin Impact even more smooth than my Baldi Bonts. While that 5000 mAh battery supports 67 watt wired and wireless charging. You've got a flipping huge 6.81 inch 120Hz AMOLED screen supporting HDR10 Plus and Dolby Vision content. And that's joined on the R end by a dinky 1 inch panel which can be used as an always on display and help you take sexy selfies with that 50 meg primary camera. A 48 megapixel ultra wide angle lens and a 48 megapixel telephoto shooter with 5x optical, 10x hybrid and 120x maxed out zoom complete the camera setup. And now I've got to go to the toilet really rather urgently because Jesus Christ oh... And you can expect Xiaomi's Mi 11 Ultra to be hitting the UK sometime this month, April, although we don't know the asking price just yet, and although Xiaomi smartphones tend to be good value, you can bet your arse that this is going to cost the best part of a liver and a kidney, and probably an arse. Now after all that hot tech action, the audience was about ready to jizz themselves into a permanent coma. So to calm things down a little bit, Xiaomi also launched a couple of budget-friendly smartphones, one of which I've had a bit of a fondle with here on Techspert, the good old Xiaomi Mi 11 Lite. This very, very incredibly immensely shiny blower allows you to stare at your haggard time-worn features and ponder the ceaseless ice-cold stream of time that seems to flow ever faster while you gradually sink under the surface. Lips turn to the sky, desperately sucking at the rancid air before you disappear into the depths and where the goddamn sh** is that f***ing bob and goddamn- Here in the UK you'll be able to grab the Mi 11 Lite 5G which comes in a minty green or bright yellow colour as well as your bog standard black. It's super light at a shade over 150 grams, but it packs in some great tech, including that fresh 5 nanometer Snapdragon 780G chipset, a 6.55 inch 90 hertz AMOLED screen supporting HDR10 Plus and 10 bit colors, and a triple lens rear camera. Born a time. That Mi 11 Lite 5G is essentially the exact same handset as the standard Mi 11 Lite, but with that upgraded chipset, bringing 5G smarts for a nice price. I'll say a nice price, Xiaomi hasn't actually revealed what that price will be yet, um, but hopefully it won't be too much at all, I'm just guessing on that front of course, but uh, it's coming out in April here in the UK if you want one. So there you go. And if you want to check out my Mi 11 Lite coverage, full unboxing and tour is live right now, my review will be coming next week. So that's most of the phone stuff, although there's also the foldy one that's only been released in China, the Mi Mix Fold, and that one's a 6.52 incher that expands into an 8 inch behemoth on demand, which I know for a fact your mum really loves. This bendy blighter packs premium specs just like that Mi 11 Ultra, but this time with a 108 megapixel primary shooter boosted by Xiaomi's new Surge C1 ISP and a clever liquid lens which can act as a telephoto or a macro camera. It's all very shiny and sexy and also only coming out in China, so I'm very sad that I'll probably never ever get the chance to fondle one. Ugh. And that's not even close to everything that Xiaomi launched at this two-day extravaganza. They also announced, for instance, a new smart band. Uh, there was a new smart projector. Oh, and they also announced that they were going to stop pumping out electric cars soon as well, because why the f*** not? Anyway, moving on from Xiaomi, so this doesn't just become the Xiaomi show. Uh, this week, B&O, Bang & Olufsen, also launched the snazzy new BioPlay portal gaming hat. Oh, great. Somebody's just decided to start cutting a hedge right outside my window. Thanks, guys! Seriously, where's that f***ing bourbon? Okay, they've either finished or they've just f***ing 
walking, stopped to take a tea break or something. So I'm going to try and smash through as much of the rest of this as possible. So where was I? The uh, the BO Player Portal gaming headset for Xbox, which is one of the only gaming headsets that won't light up your bonds like a disco while you get owned online by 12-year-old skull dodgers. You got some serious wireless audio tech packed in there for the 449 quid asking price, including lossless audio, ANC, and a bit of Dolby Atmos support. And Microsoft also spaffed out its fresh new 11th gen Rocket Lake processors as well to rather unimpressed early reviews, but no real time to dive into that or any other tech news now because it is unfortunately time for the part of the show that would make a Buddhist monk go on a wild chainsaw rampage, much like a whole bunch of pedge trimmer twats appearing suddenly outside of your window while you're trying to shoot a f***ing video. It's fewer comments. Fewer comments. As first up this week, Raphael Lara says that was the best video he's ever seen. Uh, what, last week's Textbook Weekly? You, my friend, have clearly never watched any porn. There was this great one last week where these two... Uh, uh, never mind, anyway. And Raphael continues, uh, my favourite bald tech man. Uh, you definitely meant bald there, right, didn't you? 100% certainly bald, not bald. Most assuredly not Bold, definitely bold. Uh, so many nice comments from last week. Seriously, thank you to everyone who left a lovely uh, little bit of uh, chatter in the comments last week. Makes makes old Uncle Spurt gush, it does, and not in a trousy real way. Uh, so for instance, Master G said, What a channel encouraging sexual innuendo, bad manners, and alcohol abuse. Keep it up, mate. Up is most definitely where I will keep it, sir. Uh, cheers, Master G. I uh, know as well, who uh, ran a very awesome clubhouse session, uh, my one and only clubhouse session that I've uh, I've attended so far. I really must need to jump on that and check out what's going on again. Uh, says, congratulations on half a million subs. So many Spurtons, no one is more deserving. Christopher. Uh, cheers, no. I still love how you're the only person who calls me Christopher besides my mum when she's pissed off at me. Uh, Divas the Wolf says, anime girls, eh? Now I see how we test those phone displays. Uh, indubitably, yeah, they've got to be bright, they've got to be sharp, and they've got to be splash proof. <laughs> oh, great, now they've got a leaf blower to blow around all the shit that they've already trimmed off the hedge with the goddamn noisy hedge trimmers. Oh, great, and the leaf blower is down, and now he's got a broom. <laughs> A nice quiet implement. Excellent, let's crack on. Uh, so next up, Ed H says, Loving it, Chris. More rude innuendos than an episode of Rainbow. Classic. Uh, you must be the modern day bungle. I mean, I wish, mate. I mean, that had hair. Or fur, at least. Although, of course, he did also have to live with an annoying yellow yappy twat and a suspect hippo who, let's face it, was almost certainly a secret serial killer. Don't be fooled by the pink fluffy exterior. It's all about the cold, dead black eyes. Not forgetting, of course, the grown-ass man whose best friends on Earth were three anthropomorphic arseholes. I do kind of wonder what happened to Jeffrey, but I'm really scared to Google him because, let's face it, he's probably either dead or a Project U Tree special. Although actually, what I really want to know is whatever happened to Jane, and is she still sleeping in the same bed as Rod and Freddy? Those lucky fucks. Anyway, kind of got off on a random tangent there. Apologies. Uh, next comment. Melissa says, I'm 26, but do you want to be my father? Uh... Next up, Diamond says, I do be boiling in Qatar, getting ready for the 50 degrees centigrade summers. I mean, sweet titty f***ing Christ, that is insane. It's just, it's just not, not right, man. I mean, I, I remember being in Las Vegas in the summer when it was like 44, 45 degrees. And I was basically a puddle as soon as I left the hotel. Like, I, I'm a northerner. I'm used to four degree weather, not bloody 44. So yeah, that was that entire holiday it was literally just a race to get from one air conditioned venue to the next basically and I mean it probably doesn't help that unlike a sensible person I wasn't carrying a bottle of water with me I was carrying a foot-long rum cocktail. It seemed like a really good idea at the time. And next up Giovanni says uh, I'm watching from Puerto Rico very cool uh, love your reviews especially because there's nothing you haven't reviewed um, thanks, man. Uh, though that's not quite true. Uh, there's, for instance, uh, this bad boy right here. Unicorn Universe, the premium magazine for unicorn fanciers. You can do a bit of uh, unicorn yoga. Um, I don't know what this guy's doing. Oh, here's some, some fun here. You can roll a dice to discover what your secret magical unicorn power is. Right, here we go. It's a three. And three is friendship. My superpower is friendship. So when blood-sucking parasitic aliens come down to Earth to enslave us all, I'll just go up to them and say, Hey guys, chill out, let's be friends. And here come the lawnmowers. Of course they f***ing do. I was just wondering, 
How long will it be before we get a good bit of lawnmower action? It's all right, maybe I'll just go out there and make friends with them, although I'd rather blast them with f***ing laser vision or something, that'll be better. There's a bit of quiz action. What will you study at Unicorn Academy? Let's check this out. Dance party or pizza party? Ah, uh, man, that's a really tough choice. I mean, why does that have to be one or the other? Why can't we have like a proper pizza rave? Sprinkles or sparkles? Holy sh**, Unicorn Universe, you are asking the tough questions now. Okay, so apparently my expert subject is fairy finding. Uh, you're outdoorsy and love adventure. Mm -hmm. uh, only people who are in touch with nature can find fairies, but you're a natural. Excellent. Anyway, there you have it. That's Unicorn Universe. I give it four sparkly horns out of five. Good stuff. And yeah, I think that basically is everything on Earth reviewed. And next up, Birch Tree says, Greetings from the Canadian West Coast, where we have no snow, unlike our eastern bros. Oh, sh**, son. Throwing some shade now. Bit of east-west rivalry. Gotta admit, I do not know the west coast of Canada at all. I've been to Vancouver uh, once or twice, actually, uh, but both times it was for one day as a pit stop when I was flying back from Hawaii for the Qualcomm conference. Uh, and both times, of course, I only had shorts and t-shirts on me. Hawaii gear. Not exactly proper garb for Vancouver in December, though, gotta say. Nothing a proper beer jacket it won't sort out of course. Uh, next up Simon says is that how you always sit in front of the computer with a hat and a beer? Uh, I mean I'll be honest mate sometimes the party hat is the only thing I'm wearing. Oh we've got an actual tech question here as well. Brace yourself everyone. <laughs> that was from Warmate uh, Oil again. Hello buddy hope you're keeping well. Uh, he says I'm currently using the OnePlus 7 Pro and the Android 11 update just f***s my battery life so is there a mid-range phone that gives a similar software experience to the OnePlus phone while having a great display, okay specs and a good enough camera? Well the OnePlus phones have a, a mostly stock Android vibe with Oxygen OS, uh, just a few little extra bits like the game and mode and stuff thrown on there. Um, so if you want that sort of stock Android familiar feeling, again then potentially the Pixel 4a or the 4a 5G, depending on how uh, good your budget is. And we've got another one as well. John Paul Graham says, can you recommend a fantastic camera phone that is easy to use with good battery life, IP rated and a budget of around seven to 800 quid? Um, well, again, like the Pixel 5 uh, flagship phone will tick most of those boxes. It's IP rated. It's got a great, easy to use camera. Literally just point and shoot and you'll get good looking photos pretty much any time of day. Uh, respectable battery life and the budget is actually less than that. Um, I'm <laughs> starting to feel a bit like a Google shill here. Okay, a few. I think that's the end of the tech questions uh, for now. Michael says that he spied the 2000 AD mug last episode and he says, Okay, Chris, Rogue Trooper or Judge Dredd, which one? would win in a fight. Uh, I mean, Jesus. I mean, surely that's already happened, right? I get the feeling that a Judge Dredd's Rogue Trooper crossover thing has already happened. Like, they, they like their crossovers. And if there hasn't been a Rogue Judge Dredd crossover, then why the ruzzy heck not? Because I'm pretty sure they've already done, like, Judge Dredd versus Batman. I think it was one. Judge Dredd versus the aliens out of aliens, potentially. Judge Dredd versus Mrs. Brown's boys. Now, that's what I would like to fucking see. That's the crossover of the century. Blaster thing set to incendiary. Burn, motherfuckers! As for who would win, uh, Judge Dredd and Rogue Trooper, I mean, that is too close to call, dude. I prefer Rogue Trooper's kit. He's got some pretty awesome freaking gear uh, with the little microchips of his dead buddies embedded inside and everything. But yeah, I mean, that that is a close one. I think they'd probably just be mates and then they'd just go around kicking the shit out of it, everything else. Because let's face it, Judge Dredd and Rogue Trooper together, who's going to stop that? And after that little uh, geeky comic book aside, uh, again, just wanted to say a massive thank you to everyone who commented last week. So many lovely, charming, heartwarming comments. You really are the best as band of buggers there ever was. Apologies to anyone who's commented I didn't get a chance to read out, but please do slap your comments down below. I'll try and burn through as many of those as possible next week. And I'm sure there's lots more tech shenanigans going on next week. Some of it uh, that's still embargoed. Uh, there's going to be a couple more pre-briefs. Big Nokia launch on Thursday the 8th. So stay tuned for some potentially hands-on action there. Yes, join me next uh, Friday for more Techspert Weekly shenanigans. Full review of the Xiaomi Mi Lite and hopefully a couple of other bits coming at you as well. And have yourselves a fun bloody tastic weekend. Love you, boy!